this. Um, sometimes they might think, well, what's actually going on? Where's the excitement? But the Headingley game in particular, and it wasn't the only one that Bob did great things, was something where the excitement must have been obvious to people who didn't know a thing about cricket. It's one of those great occasions. And, and Bob was at the centre of it. And he, he probably, half the time in it, was almost unaware of what he was doing. He was working, you know, I mean, he was on autopilot, a brilliant autopilot. And, you know, he was, he was almost locked in his own world with just one thought, get those Aussies back in the pavilion, which he achieved brilliantly. Well, it's been lovely talking to you this morning, Sir Tim Rice, and uh, good luck with the campaign, and I'm sure a lot of money will be raised, so it's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. One great musician to another. We're going to be talking to Francis Rossi, who's looking forward to getting out on the road with status quo again after more than a year in lockdown. Yes, he's spent the time wisely, mainly in his garden, apparently, listening to some classic music. Well, classics from the 80s. Yeah, that's yeah. classic. Um, he's put those together for a new compilation album. Listen to this. Every 45 minutes, and there's still no national screening programme because the PSA test is unreliable. And so that's not perfect, and that's what we're trying to raise money and awareness for um, through the Bob Willis Fund and helping um, Prostate Cancer UK. In lockdown, Lauren painted this portrait of her husband at the crease, ready to deliver. He did have an iconic action, didn't he? And I think the cubism also gives it quite a lot of movement. So it feels like he's actually storming in, doesn't it? It does. I'm quite pleased with the result. Lauren is planning to auction her painting. The money will go to the Bob Willis Fund to help the fight against prostate cancer. Graham Satchel, BBC News. Now, I'm rather hoping that our next guest, Sir Tim Rice, who is a great friend of Bob's, a huge cricket fan, of course. Uh, uh, Sir Tim, morning to you. I, I, could you see yeah. that, that, port, that portrait that uh, Lauren has done? Because we were remarking earlier, it's a beautiful picture. It's very stylized. It's, it's absolutely terrific, and I think it'll raise a lot of money, which, which is great. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Well, that's the... Be uh, of yeah. Now, you have, uh, you have a personal link uh, to Bob, of course, because you are friends and you're a massive cricket fan. But also, this is, this is personal for you, isn't it, for, for family reasons? Yes. Um, my father um, died um, from prostate cancer many years ago, and both my brother and I have had prostate problems, which um, we think are fixed. Um, but so, you know, so we were lucky, whereas poor Bob wasn't lucky. Um, and it is, as Lauren was saying, it is a very serious disease which does take the life of many, many men. And it's important that people get checked up. And um, I was lucky to have it caught quite early because I had no, no obvious symptoms at all. And ditto my brother. Um, my father, many years ago, um, wasn't, wasn't, I mean, it was even less um, easy to locate than it, than, than it is now. And there are still, you know, people who ought to be checked up much more now. But back then, it was um, unusual. Do you want to just go through kind of what that test, that checkup involves? Well, I didn't really make a phone call, but um, Bob, as you know, Bob Dylan, uh, sorry, Bob Willis. Bob Dylan was not the guy who took um, eight wickets at Henningley. Bob Willis was. Um, Bob Willis was a great lover of, of opera, grand opera, and also of, of the wonderful Bob Dylan. And he even added the name Dylan into his name. So he became Robert George Dylan Willis, RGD. And um, when Lauren um, and Bob's brother David were, were getting all this organization, um, we prostate cancer together in memory and in honor of Bob, um, we wondered if there was any chance of getting Bob Dylan to lend his name to it. And um, Bob Dylan is, is a difficult chap to get hold of, quite rightly. And um, I didn't actually ring anybody up, but I sent some emails. I got the connection for his office, his manager, and we had a very friendly exchange of, of views. And um, uh, Bob agreed to become um, an honorary patron, um, which is great for us. And of course, Bob Dylan, one of the greatest songwriters of all time, coming up for his 80th birthday any minute. And um, it's, it's, it's a great boost. And um, we're, we're honored that, that that Bob, Bob Dylan, is, is, is helping our Bob just by, just by his name. But he's given a couple of nice quotes and we are very, very grateful indeed. But we have edge to him, but she made clear that he was loving. He gave great hugs. He was, you know, fun to be around and self-effacing and didn't, you know, talk about himself. He was much more interested in other people. Who was the Bob Willis that you knew? Well, I clearly knew the, the um, 
delightful Bob Willis. There was only one Bob Willis, really. He was delightful. He was a very good entertainer when he criticised on the um, TV, um, talking about other cricketers. He was, you know, he had a lot of criticism himself. Brilliant though he was during his career. Everybody in any form of entertainment, be it sport or theatre, you're going to get lots of people having a go at you. And often they're right. And Bob was admired and loved by people of all cricket generations. And as a, as, and as a regular bloke down the pub or chatting to or having dinner with or going to the opera with, um, he, he, he was absolutely delightful. I didn't hug him quite as much as Lauren did, but um, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't have minded if I had. He was, he was a delightful chap. He was a um, tall, very tall bloke. There was an awful lot of him to the, um, to the pound. Or, and, um, you know, he was, he was a commanding presence. But, but he was actually, in a way, quite a, I would say, quite, quite a quiet man. A very, I mean, I, mean, he, I mean, he was able to just come up with the odd phrase, the odd remark, which, was, which actually got to the nub of any matter. But he's very funny. I mean, I remember the last lunch I had with him. He was on top form, even though we all knew that he wasn't that well. He like yourself, just seeing those images of him charging down the pitch and launching one of those those balls and the emotions that he had at that time. I mean, it's a joy to see it again. Half the time in it was almost unaware of what he was doing. He was working, you know, I mean, he was on autopilot, brilliant autopilot, and... You know, he was he was almost locked in his own world with just one thought, get those Aussies back in the pavilion, which he achieved brilliantly. Well, it's been lovely talking to you this morning. So Tim Rice and gentle head, head nod jig. going on yeah. in my screen here. A little gentle head nod listening to those tunes. Morning, Francis. Morning. Good morning to you both. Is it uh, that's that part of the point, isn't it? I mean, uh, there is a whole bunch of songs there that are, are kind of classics in their own right, and uh, there it is, and uh, that that's the joy of it, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, it's uh, I think there are sixty tracks on there. Why they chose me to do, or asked me to do, it, I don't know, but um, it seems to be doing quite well. I'm kind of surprised, really, but it's. Um, I'm really, I'm getting into those kind of um, compilation albums, which is a terrible thing to say, but I find they're good value for money and such, and they're hard copy, they're hard pieces of plastic, or what, oh, they're hard pieces of record. Who did you talk plastic. about this with? Who did you debate, kind of, with as to what songs made the, made the album? I was given a list of, um, I don't know how many were on there, but obviously it's got to be under a certain uh, heading, but the rock music, I suppose. But uh, I, I also discovered there's certain songs that I thought I wouldn't like or didn't like then that I now found that, oh, that I quite like that. Whether it's one had a uh, thought who I was then or whatever, yeah, there's a competition thing. I don't like that band because they're competition. And uh, some of them I just found I quite like, and so I went for them. And some I had to think about a bit as an album or what other people might like, particularly on that rock stuff that people do. Rock, you know that <laughs> way people go? Can you do that one more time for us? Rock. Sorry, I don't know why we all do that. We go rock. Why do we don't just say rock in there? I don't understand. Darling. Well, we like it. Does it? We like it. Doesn't matter. I'm I couldn't think too much about it, so I think I, I slowed down and calmed down a lot which I've got sunk into and comfortable with. But I painted about four sheds. I did loads of garden furniture. I did stuff in the studio, paint, clear, tidied that up and stuff in that. And then went and did certain rooms in the house. I'm sure my wife thinks, no, but I did. And um, then I went round again and did them again. <laughs> and it was only until this year, really, that I started to think, oh, this is going on a bit now. Um, Francis, on, a, on the decorating thing, just one little technicality. I think the map behind you is, is it an, an angle? Is that is it an angle? Is it not straight? No, it's the thing I've got this thing to. You see, look, see, shouldn't do that. Upsets them in the back room. It's it's probably, how's that? <laughs> is it, it still looks like it's at an angle for me, but I can't quite work it out. Is it an angle or not? Hang on, then. There you are. See, it's... Is that better? It's not. I could kill you for this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, sure you're right. I've always loved the idea of the map. So that when I was, uh, you know, when my children were younger, I'd always say to them, Mum would show them where I was in the map, and they go, Yeah, bye, Dad. Kids are like that. How are you, Dad? Yeah, bye. Do you know what, Francis? It's been lovely chatting been with really you this morning. Uh, thank you very much. Go and enjoy your swim and your porridge and all those things. Yeah, I've got the porridge coming up, so yeah, thanks very much. Enjoy. Thank you.
Right I love the fact that he's so regimented. <laughs> it's just not what you'd expect. It's a great song on, on the, really, the No Questions really, really, really. songs. It's called 80s Rockdown. That's the album. That's what Francis has compiled. It's out tomorrow. And his I Talk Too Much tour. I wonder how he um, came up with the name of that. Yep. It begins in Margate on June the 29th. You're watching BBC Breakfast time now, 8.59.